This story will be told from the point of view of a friend of mine, and for this story, I'll call her Janet. I will type this as she tells it to me. I have been a nurse since I was fresh out of college, my whole childhood. That was what I wanted to do. I worked the night shift as a small hospital in my equally small town. We have a small staff here, and we are like a little family. In my ward there are two other night shift nurses that have become my best friends, along with co-workers. I will be calling them Tawny and Jody for the sack of the story. Tawny is my age, and we started working here at the same time. We did some on-site trainings together and we have a lot in common outside of work as well. Tawny is just about the sweetest person you'll ever meet. She is a small woman with a soft voice, but she's a dang good nurse. Jody is several years older than Tawny and me, and she's a seasoned pro. With her take charge attitude and ability to remain leveled in the most intense situations, Jody is the one we look to for advice and help. The three of us are an inseparable trio, and we have come to be known as the three nurse key tiers among the rest of the staff and the town. Our small town is one of those cozy everyone knows everyone type situations, and nothing of any significance really happens here. Leading up to the night my story takes place, the biggest news to hit local papers in weeks was the Tate family's new puppy, Ripley. That being said, the events of that night obviously shook the entire town. Anyway, now that you know everybody and understand the situation in a nutshell, I'll get to the good part. It was 9 p.m. the night of November 20th. Tawny, Jody and I were putting in extra hours that night to make up for the trip we were planning for the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday. I remember it being warm for a November night, and I made my way up to the nurse's station as I always did. Tawny was already there as she usually was the first to arrive, and Jody filed in a few minutes after I did. It was around 9.30 when we officially began making our rounds, and we went on our own ways to tend to our respective assigned duties. It was a quiet night, but few patients were there that night were in stable condition, and mostly slept all night. I didn't begin to feel off until it was nearly midnight, when I realized that, although I'd crossed paths with Tawny a few times, I had not seen Jody in a couple hours. When I next met up with Tawny in the nurse's station for our break, I asked her about Jody, and she had not seen her in a while either. But what worried us even more was Jody's failure to show up for the break. Seeing that our patients were still asleep, we decided to look for her ourselves. The hospital's hallways were dark and quiet, maybe even a little too quiet. Tawny and I went opposite directions to cover more ground and neither of us wanted to actually call out for Jody for fear of waking the patients, so we opted to quietly peek into each room. I had checked almost all the rooms of her patients, and what few of them were not sound asleep reported not having seen her for around an hour. This struck me as incredibly odd. Abandoning her post like this was very out of character for a dedicated nurse like Jody was. Tawny and I met up again after searching and neither one of us had any answers. Tawny had even checked to see if Jody had signed out, thinking that maybe she got suddenly sick and had to go home, but there was no record of it. Tawny fidgeted nervously with her hands as she said, maybe she went downstairs to the maternity ward. She gets called there for backup sometimes. This was true Jody had been a labor and delivery nurse for several years before taking this position, and so, downstairs we went. We took extra care to be quiet in this particular part of the hospital and stopped only briefly to share a girly smile and giggle at the sleeping newborns on the other side of the nursery glass. So tiny, Tawny whispered as we walked away. A few more minutes of fruitless searching passed before we came to the door of the hot tub room, where water births were performed. The metal door, usually kept locked was ajar. I felt this horrible feeling of dread wash over me as I inched open the door and stepped into the entrance. The actual room with the hot tub was accessed by two doors, the first being the metal one we'd already come through, and the second being a glass door. My heart sank as my gaze landed on the glass door. Dot, dot, dot. There were handprints all over it on the inside and the room was so steamy the once clear door looked almost white. Tawny pointed nervously to the thermostat that controlled the tub, 
and I saw that it was turned to maximum heat. Not a word was said between us before we began to frantically try to pick the lock on the glass door, steam pouring out like smoke from a witch's cauldron as the door finally cracked open. Tawny nearly tackled me to yank the door open, and the heat and steam hit us in the face instantly. It reminded me of opening an oven, and feeling all the moist, hot air blast you in the face. We rushed into the room having to feel our way around in the thick steam until the majority of it escaped out the open door. Once the haze cleared, I caught sight of a figure laying sprawled out on the floor. Tawny, I called, crouching down to find that it was Jody. Tawny screamed, but quickly regained her composure to help me hoist up our unconscious co-worker and carry her out into more breathable air. Jody's skin was red and inflamed, and she was soaking wet scrubs and all. She wore angry bruises on her upper arms, in the shape of handprints. But despite this, she was alive, her chest rising and falling frantically as soon as the air was more suitable to breathe. When she opened her eyes, they were wide and fearful, and she began struggling to strain words together as we helped her to her feet. I couldn't make out much of what she was trying to say, but I did get a few weak, raspy words. Trap dot 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 water dot 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 scalding dot 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 couldn't breathe. Tawny and I shared a wide eye look. What in the horror movie is happening here? Tawny breathed, adding a bit of humor to the situation, but it was also a very valid question. What was happening here? Who did this to Jody? We hurried back to the nurse's station, fully intending to call the police, but as we started up the stairs, we heard rapid footsteps approaching the staircase door. Injured as she was, Jody broke into a full sprint and we were right on her heels. It was jarring seeing Jody, our mentor, usually so calm and sure of herself, take off running in fear like a spook rabbit. Not that I blamed her one bit, but Jody had always been the stand your ground type. Not tonight, though. She noped out and so did Tawny and I, locking ourselves in the nurse's station and dialing 911. Tawny tried to get a hold of the other staff but couldn't get a response. I have never felt more alone in my life. There weren't many of us working at the small hospital that night to begin with, but now what few were there were nowhere to be found. Just as three ladies trapped alone was an unsettling thought to say the least. I'll never forget the look of pure terror in Jody's eyes as she searched the nurse's station for a weapon. She found a scalpel and told us to to grab a hammer or a large wrench from the connected storage closet. We did as we were told, as we always did when Jody gave us an order. Armed with her scalpel, Jody looked a bit less afraid and a bit more angry, defensive, even. We waited there, huddled together in the nurse's station for what felt like hours, but couldn't have been more than 20 minutes. We had heard heavy footsteps pacing up and down the hallway intermittently the whole time, but when the cops arrived, and searched the hospital. They found nothing. No person, no scalding water in the tub, and the water had been emptied and the temperature turned down. The officer we spoke to claimed that the tub didn't even seem wet on the bottom. I could tell they did not believe our story, but when they saw Jody's injuries, they took us a bit more seriously, even searching the hospital again. But they came up with nothing. To this day we have no idea what happened that night. The town was warned of an attempted murder, and informed that the suspect had never been found. But the truth was that there never really was a suspect. Jody had not seen the perpetrator, as she said she'd been grabbed from behind and dragged into the tub room while she was in the maternity ward, taking a quick break to take a peek at the nursery babies, as she often did. The three of us are still working at that hospital, reassured by added security measures that were put into place after this incident. We try not to let the memories get to us, but Jody never really has been exactly the same. She isn't the confident, fearless woman she once was, and is now jumpy, and does not like to make her rounds alone anymore. And you know what? Please save yourself always.